such a great God. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. Stand in reverence to the reading of the word, if you would please. Malachi, the first chapter. For students who are in attendance, who are well-versed, you are familiar to some degree with the primary purpose of the prophecy as recorded by Malachi. But for the sake of time and to communicate as much as possible within the frame of time that I have, I'm only going to point out a couple of verses. Malachi chapter 1, verse 7. It references polluted bread that was offered the altar. The eighth verse says that the offering was the blind sacrifice. And then it would further state that they had brought the lame and they had brought the sick. And God was not pleased. Nestled comfortably and befittingly in that first chapter is perhaps one of the most important verses of Scripture you'll find in the entirety of the Word of God. It's verse 11. For from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Four chapters is the compilation of this particular prophecy. There is an incredible occurrence of prophetic origin in the third chapter. Now, I know what most of you are thinking. That third chapter is about tithes and offerings. Well, as a matter of fact, it is. But before there was an address concerning robbery, there was, as is always the case in Holy Scripture, there was a promise. And the promise was this. Behold, verse 1, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner, and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering. In righteousness we're gonna get the preachers first we got to get them straightened out everybody say let's get the preacher straightened out <laughs> then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old as in former days father you're great you are an ever-present help in the times of trouble. Lord, we have found your grace to be sufficient in all things. You've kept us, and you are keeping us. You have strengthened us and continue to do so. May the Spirit of the Lord fit us for this very moment at hand. This is the day the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. Look not to another day as being the day of salvation, for the Bible says this is the day of salvation. And I would pose a question to one and all. How can we be negligent with so great a salvation as this? Why don't you lift your hands and lift your voices and let's magnify the Lord in this house. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. Gracious is our Lord. Kind is our Lord. Beautiful in situation is our Lord. And we glorify the name that is above every name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And with a shout in your spirit, you may be seated. Those of you that are in need of desperate prayer, who are hung up on B, P, and J, isn't that the way you say it? P, B, and J. Pardon me. You open the fresh jar of Jiffy. Peter Pan, great value. Jiffy, Skippy. And that horrible scent just wafts through your house. And you're totally consumed with an idea because you've just gotten a hold of a fresh jar of mayhaw. Plum. Muscadine. Bama grape. Welch grape. That's all I got. And you can't wait to slather that peanut butter on a slice of bread anticipating now don't get me wrong if you make may hall jelly I love it but that's for another day I'm going to quit that Melda. <laughs> sister Lewis told me I need to quit that and you open that loaf of bread and you pull the slice out and sitting on the top of that slice is a culture of penicillin it kind of loses its oomph doesn't it because you have the peanut butter and you got the jelly but it's just not going to work on polluted bread. If we studied the book of Malachi, we would understand that primarily the book of Malachi is about proper worship. It's about a designation and an understanding how to keep the house in proper order, how we go about God's business. My brothers and sisters, on this Pentecost Sunday, 2016 we are called and chosen for the purpose of fulfilling destiny we are called and we are chosen to fulfill the will of divine order and if you want to know what the will of God is for you on this Sunday morning the father desires such to worship him and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and so we anticipate 
the continuation of this service. If you haven't figured it out by now, we're doing things a little different. We're kind of giving this service a little Azusa Street flair. When the Holy Ghost was poured out on Azusa Street, uh, you know what happened? Uh, they were in a prayer meeting. Amen. And the Spirit of God began to move on the men of God and the women of God. Let's not confuse this. The Spirit of God began to move on the men of God and on the women of God. And when the anointing would move someone, they would just step to the podium and start preaching. And there would be a divine unction from the heaven of heavens, an open door, if you will. And the Spirit of the Lord would fall, and multitudes of people would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I've come to tell you uh, that every facet of this service uh, is a facet of worship. Everything we do from this moment forward uh, ought to be to the glory of our God. Don't be hesitant to do what the Spirit is telling you to do. Rejoice in the beauty uh, and in the righteousness uh, of the glory of Almighty God. Let your shout be heard in the sanctuary. Let every yoke be broken. Let the anointing be strong. Let healing come into this house. The catalyst of Pentecost was the messenger of Malachi. It was the gift of gifts. And one of the beautiful things about recipients of this gift is there doesn't appear to be a lot of qualification to position us to receive. The Bible said that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. This gift was given not after we had met the qualifications of religious understanding he just looked down and saw a fallen race and by the grace of God robed himself in flesh and came to a ransom so that you and I could be removed from the auction block of slavery into the beauty of sonship and now we are the sons and the daughters of God Jesus became the great offering so that you and I could gather on a Pentecost Sunday 2016 with a heart overflowing with appreciation for the beauty and the righteousness that flows through him and that we who that we could have this testimony in an earthen vessel uh, that we, Brother Ron, are partakers of his divine nature. We've had this idea, oh, God's character is this and God's character. God doesn't have character. He has nature. He's not going to be more God tomorrow than he is today. He's not going to be a better God uh, next week than he is today. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, and while our character varies, uh, the character of God uh, is stationed uh, in the nature of God. Uh, what's his nature? God is love. Uh, God is spirit. Uh, and they again uh, that worship him uh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. on the clock I close with this 1st Chronicles 16 the Bible says for God or for great is the Lord and great to be praised he also is to be feared about above all gods glory and honor are in his presence Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord 
the glory due unto his name. Well, let's try this one and see if this one gets you. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We will not have worshipped him if we don't bring some kind of gift to present him. Brother Lewis, I don't have any money. If you're good for it, I'll loan you a buck or two. But this ain't really about money. What this is about is God. And the grace that he has extended us. And the mercies that he has shown us. And the keeping of fresh anointing. We're about to receive an offering. Better yet. We're about to bring an offering. I want everybody to come. Young, middle-aged, and elderly. Bring your tithe. Bring your financial contribution. But more importantly, more importantly, bring your praise. A stand. Brother Lewis, I don't know if I'm where I need to be spiritually. That's all right. Bring your praise anyway. God knows where you are. One of the greatest demonstrations of, of blessing is the fact that he allowed you to be in his house today. You could have been anywhere else, but God directs you to his house today. So bring your praise. Brother Lewis, I don't have the same gift you have. That's all right. That's okay. You're breathing. You seem to be alive. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So if you're not dead back there, I just want you to come and bring your praise and bring your offering. The offering plates are here on the pew, on the altar benches. Oh, don't just come to leave an offering. Come praising. Come praising. Come with a shout. Lift your voice in anticipation.